Hi there YouTube, welcome back. This is Sebastian from SDC Canada and we are looking at Excel 2013 lesson 1.2. In this lesson we are going to continue from where we left off with the first lesson but what we will be looking at are the formula bar auto sum feature insert functions and basic formulas. As you can see uh, where we left off we had a very simple spreadsheet that was calculating the amount of food uh, or the amount of money we spent on food each week. What we need to do is we need to add a new uh, heading for column I and what we should do is we should actually go to cell I3 and put in the word total because what we're looking to do here is calculate the total uh, money spent for each meal for the week. And that's going to calculate uh, for breakfast, for instance, $2 each day. And we don't really need Excel to calculate that for us. We know that $2 times uh, 7 days is going to equal 14. But nonetheless, the features are built into the program that allow us to calculate numbers just like these. And the beauty of it is that not only do we calculate numbers with Excel, we have the ability to auto recalculate when a number changes. That's the difference between using a calculator, for instance, and using software like Excel. If something changes in a calculation and you're using a calculator, then you usually have to go back and recalculate the entire thing. With Excel, if one number changes, as long as your formula is written properly, it will auto recalculate and give you the new result. So how do we auto sum the breakfast amounts for the week? Well, it's very easy. As I may have mentioned earlier or in the previous video, you should have the cell that is active where you want the result to be. In this case, we have cell I4 being active and you can see there's a border around it. This is where the result needs to go. Therefore, we make sure it is selected. Once it is selected, we simply make sure that we are on our home tab here at the top. And to the very far right, you'll notice that there's an auto sum button. And I joke around with my students all the time and I always say, you know, it, it kind of looks like it's Greek, but it sounds Japanese. Now I'll leave that to you to figure out, but give it a shot. Bottom line, this is the button. This button does a lot of things. And for us right now, it's going to sum up the breakfast meals uh, for the week. So I4 selected, we've located the auto sum button on the home ribbon. And I will make note, depending on the resolution of your screen, sometimes the word auto sum does not appear. You will just get a symbol. So just keep an eye out for it. And that's what it looks like. Okay, so we'll click on it once. And it's very important just to click on it once and you'll see what happens. When you click on the auto sum button once, it's going to select the cells that it believes need to be calculated or put together. And what you're actually seeing here is you're actually seeing the formula, which is the sum formula. And we'll get into more formulas later on. But auto sum, obviously, is going to sum up a group of cells. And the group of cells that it wants us to auto sum is the seven twos that you see right here. If you're wondering what this means to the right of the function, the sum function, this is simply stating that it will add up all numbers between B4 and H4. That is a range, and we talk about ranges later on as well. If the range is correct, visually and obviously in, in written form, then all you need to do is press enter. When you press enter, it's going to give you the result in which we just talked about, which is 14. Very easy number to uh, calculate in our heads. What people tend to do is they get overly excited. They see, oh, wow, this really works. This is awesome. And they calculate that using auto sum. But then they'll en end up going here, which is I5, click on auto sum again, and, and voila, you've got a new result. Very awesome. The problem is they'll go down to the, f to the next one, which is I6. And what happens there is if you're not catching, it's only going to sum these two numbers instead of across this way. And a lot of people get stuck with that. And they miss it. In order to be safe, I highly recommend you create this auto sum here. Make sure the result is proper. And instead of running auto sum each row, you simply go to the bottom right corner of the cell, which we talked about already. This is the autofill handle. So at that bottom right corner, you drag down. And what it will automatically do 
is it will automatically take that auto sum here and it'll continue to follow the trend. If you look at the formula bar, which is right here, and we'll talk about that some more too, it'll say equal sum B5 to H5. This one was row four, this one is row five. So it is automatically calculating the totals for you. This is what they call uh, relative referencing. Basically, it's saying that if this formula states in I th in I4 that it should add up all these numbers, when you drag it down, it's obviously saying, well, then, hey, this number must equal to all these numbers. And for 90% of the work that you do in Excel, that's perfect. That will be fine. That's what we call relative referencing. Later in a different video, we'll talk about um, absolute referencing, which is completely different. So as you can see, we got our totals. That's fantastic. Very, very good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete some of the work that we previously completed in lesson one. So just a little refresher for you. When selecting cells or multiple cells, try and stay in the middle of the cell that you want to start with. Left click, drag across, and then down. This is showing us that all these cells are selected and if we would like to delete the contents which is very easy you just press the delete key on your keyboard which we'll do now we've now gotten rid of that information which isn't going to do us any good as it stands right now what we're going to do now is we're also going to go down in column a we're going to go to cell a8 and we're going to put in a couple of different functions that we're going to take a look at because that basically this is what this lesson is looking at basic functions ones that uh, will work and what we'll do is we'll do this for example we'll do another total and what this total will do is it will actually calculate the total spent each day rather than each meal so we're going to have each meal over here and then we're going to have the total for each day going across here after that we will do average that's always a good function to use we'll do a couple more min which is short form for minimum and I type in min because I know that's the actual function we got to look for. And we can do max, which is the maximum. And we'll go into a little more detail as we do each one. A lot of my students, what they like to do is they like to find the total and then drag it across. And then find the average and then drag it across. And that works. That's okay. But it is time consuming. And the, the whole point of Excel is to... Uh, try to make ourselves a little bit quicker at what we do, more productive. So we're not going to do it the way that some of the students that learn it for the first time like to do it. We're going to do it the quick and, and effective way. In cell B8, so column B, cell 8, or row 8, we are going to make that active. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to use our friend auto sum, right? We saw that before. We're going to go up to the home ribbon, the home uh, tab, sorry, and then there's the auto sum button like you've seen previously, and we're going to click it once. What you're going to notice is that it's going to take the four numbers above, which is fine. Excel is trained to look up and to the left, so this is what it's doing. So above it, it's got four numbers. It says equal sum, the right function, perfect, and the range is what we're looking for as well, so B4 to B7. Once we verify this, and I always tell my students, make sure you verify this because if it is by chance selecting the wrong cell, which you'll see in a minute, it'll give you the wrong answer. And if you get the wrong answer in Excel, that is very bad. It's not like Word where you can misspell a word and everyone laughs about it. You make a mistake with Excel, you make a mistake with numbers, somebody's going to be angry, especially when it comes down to like bonuses and, and money and things like that. You may even go to jail. You never know. So press enter. And what we have now is for Sunday, a total of $17 was spent, which is fantastic. And like I said, we're not going to drag it across because I don't believe that's the most effective way. We're going to find the average, we're going to find the minimum, and we're going to find the maximum for Sunday. And when we find those numbers, then we will select all of them and drag them all across. That's what we're going to do next. So let's click on cell B9, make sure it's active. So column B, row 9, that's the cell. We are also going to use our auto sum button to allow us to find out how to calculate the average. If you notice, beside the auto sum button, there's this little arrow that points down. What that's generally saying is that there are some more, or there are more functions available. So let's click it. You'll notice that you'll see sum, average, 
count, numbers, max, and min. Four of the things that we were looking for are there. We're going to deal with this average for now, but for max and min, I want to take you the long route just so that you know how to use that way too. So I'm going to click average here, and I want you to see what happens. Do you see anything wrong? Before I point it out, before I say anything, I want to know, do you see anything wrong? Obviously, you can't answer me, but just by looking closely, there is an error. What's happening here is that the system, or Excel for that matter, is including the total in your average calculation, which should not be there. That's incorrect. So what we need to do here is we need to say, hey, Excel, you made a boo-boo here. We need to set you up. We need to fix you. The range it is pointing to is B4 to B8. And as you notice, that's including the total, which is wrong. To correct this, it is extremely simple, but you have to be careful which way you decide to do it. You can either go up to the formula bar and change that 8 to a 7, which would correct it, or what I always suggest is use your mouse to select the proper cells. This way, you do not run the risk of a keystroke error. Keystroke error is simply pressing the wrong key, thinking you press the right one, pressing enter without noticing, and boom, wrong answer. So as I say, there's many ways of fixing this, but I highly recommend just go back up to B4, left click, and drag it down to B7. You've used your mouse, you now visually see that you have the correct range, and you should be satisfied with that. Then you should be able to press enter and feel confident you're going to get the right average. Something weird has happened here, if you noticed. My date changed, or my result showed 6 a.m., which is incorrect. And the reason why that is, and we haven't gotten into this yet, but when I was doing the autofill for the dates and the months, it automatically changed the formatting of that cell. If you retype this spreadsheet from scratch for this lesson, you probably wouldn't run into that. But because this was used in lesson one, this is what's happened. But you know what? Now's a good time to fix it. So instead of it being a custom format, I need to go back up here. And I need to say, hey, this is a general format, not a custom. So I do that. And now you'll notice, as weird as it is, that is the average. If you have any questions about that at all, just put it in the comments and I'll explain it a little bit better. But basically, it had the wrong formatting. And you'll notice that in other uh, lessons that we do when we deal with date and time, you'll see that happens a lot. Even percentages can, can pose a problem. Either way, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to minimum over here, and we're going to find the minimum. Like I said, it was also found in the auto sum area, but I don't want to use that. I want to teach you that when you're looking for an, uh, a minimum, minimum calculation such as this, there's a place over here called insert function. There's about three different ways to get here, but I like this FX button. It's, it's neat, it's clean, it's right beside your formula bar, it's accessible. When you're looking for a function, if you click on this, you're going to get a dialog box appear. This dialog box is going to say, well, what are you looking for? And depending on what you're looking for, you could either search for it by typing it in and clicking go, or you can find what category it was in and locate it that way. It is much easier just to start typing the name of the function you're looking for, which in this case is min. You must press go. Do not forget to press go. What happens is people type in min and they click OK. And what ends up happening is it's going to take the formula that's top of the list, which is VLOOKUP in my case, and that is not going to work for you. So make sure you click or type in min, you click go, give it a second, depending on your computer, it will pull up the proper function right here. Once it does that, you can click OK. Now it's saying, all right, we're going to give you a minimum for sure, but we're only going to base it on B9. Well, that doesn't make any sense because B9 is our average. What we need to do here is very similar to what we did in the average, is we need to select the range. So do not click in here. As you can see, it's highlighted and there's the cursors to the right of it. Do not click inside there because once you do, if you try and select the proper cells after, it will make a problem for you. It won't give you a range. It'll give you B9 plus a range, and that will give you the wrong answer. So as I said, do not touch this until you select the proper cells. It will automatically update the function arguments right here. Those are the correct ones. They look good. We will click OK. 
As you can tell, it's res uh, returning a result of a minimum of one. And based on these four numbers alone, yes, you can tell that the snack is our minimum value, and it is one. Max is a very similar calculation. Click on B11, click FX, and from there, we're gonna search for max, M-A-X, and we make sure that we click go. Once we select go, you'll notice the max function appears at the top of the list, and we can click OK. Same situation. This time it's given us a range, but the range is incorrect. It's B9 to B10. We don't touch it. We just simply say, nope, we want these four. We correct the range, B4 to B7, and now our answer should be proper. We click OK. Now we've got ourselves all the numbers that we're looking for. Total, average, minimum, and max. All we need to do is highlight these four, go to the bottom right corner, get that angry plus sign working for us, left click, drag across. Now that's a fast and effective way to do calculations, do some analysis of our data using formulas. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and if you do have any questions whatsoever, please put them in the comments, and I will help or do my best to help you out and answer anything that uh, you uh, bring up. Also, if, like I said before, if there's anything you do want to learn that I haven't addressed yet, which at this point I've only done two lessons, but I will do some more, let me know what you're thinking, and I will do my best to get you a lesson based on that. Thank you again, and have a great evening.